What's going on everybody? Hex Grassroots, the Grassroots channel about Hex, Pulse and Pulse Chain. Again live as always, Tuesday 7 p.m. Berlin time slash CET, CET time. Uh, good evening, good morning from all around the world, gentlemen and ladies, of course. We have a lot of uh, uh, ladies actually in the Hex ecosystem, so that's super exciting as well. That's very unusual, right, for Hex. So, uh, really looking forward uh, together is episode, uh, today is episode number 16. And again, with a special guest today, the one and only, the legendary, the OG, Balliot Bren. But before we introduce him, before we he he joins us, my co-host Hex Misha is always on my side. How's it going, Hex Misha? Thank you, Meister. Good to be here and good evening to everyone tuning in. Nothing better than a chill Hex stream on Tuesday evening. Uh, as you said it, we are looking forward to talk to the legend, Balliot Brand, a guy recently passed 5k subscribers on his YouTube channel. Woo! And he also has a all my links that I want to show you quick. Because this kid is all over the place. A retired Hexican at the age of 25. You find him on his... Uh, Hex and Pulse Chain YouTube channel. He's been having this channel for 13 years and recently wow, passed, really? as mentioned, 5K subscribers. Yeah, very devoted. He has a second channel devoted to SciVive, surviving through science. <laughs> he talks about nice. uh, the sudden wealth syndrome, how money is an amplifier, what to do next, very important topics. He has free Twitter accounts, his staker invite, uh, link his own homepage, and he's also on Twitch, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. You can find him all there. I'm gonna share the link, but uh, let's not hear it from me, let's hear it from the man himself. I would say, All right, guys, uh, let's bring him on. Belliot Brand, welcome. Hey, How's it going, guys? Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank Thanks for being be with here. us. That's amazing. It's an honor and a pleasure to talking to you finally, right? Like we've been in touch, but um, you were pretty busy. We were busy, but finally it happened. Yeah, it's it's true. There's there's a lot of coordinating uh, that goes on sometimes, uh, especially with the different you know time zones and things like that. But yeah, I'm happy right. that we're here, and you know, you guys are doing a really good job. And uh, I retweeted it right before the the stream actually started, and. Same thing, shouted it out the other day. And awesome. man, the thing that we can do as hexagons is, you know, spread the word. We need to we need to get this channel up to a little bit more than say 327 subscribers. Uh, you know, it's like you guys could be at like a thousand things like that. So <laughs> what anyways, good it? job, man. Absolutely. Thank you very much. We are working on it. Actually, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the props, uh, Balliot Brand. Uh, we tried to contribute, of course, to the ecosystem. We've been around for a while, but now we try to do a bit more. And actually, our niche or our USP is to actually bring a little bit more uh, less known hexagons to the front, um, just to give them a little bit more space in the ecosystem where they can actively more engage with the community so uh, technically a popular hexagon like you is usually not our target group but of course um, we bring from time to time like this tire one you could say uh, popular hexagons of course to get a little bit traction but of course it's an honor to meet you so thank you for supporting us in in, in, in that regard thank yeah you, yeah you too uh, i think that's one thing that we can do all as a community is you know once again subscribe to everyone uh, like all of their videos and kind of just get the word out because once again you know if you have a chain link and you have a you know weak part of that link then uh you know it's not going to be as strong as if the the link itself was a you know strong hole absolutely absolutely and uh, this uh the hexagon community has been growing all the time but uh recently like the last months especially there's so many youtubers which is amazing right uh it's exploding you can't catch up it's too much content <laughs> yeah that's so true that's amazing no, it's a, that's amazing yeah no it's it's a good thing you know it's uh it's one thing that you know richard says the term of hey uh pre-viral right hey we're still pre-viral you know under a hundred thousand hex stakers and things like this and um you know sometimes you might think oh hey the price did ten thousand x like how can we really be pre-viral 
And then when you just kind of see where crypto is at compared to say the rest of the world and let alone say Hex versus Bitcoin and all these other things, uh, we really are pre-viral. And you mentioned all of these people uh, in the community, you know, kind of showing up and, and participating. And, you know, that's a, that's a really cool thing to see. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like as Misha said, it's uh, very uh, challenging to catch up with all the streamers. Uh, we try, we try our best ourselves. Uh, I was lucky enough to catch uh, your latest streams, uh, Bran. You had a couple of really nice guests on your show, right? Uh, I, I remember you had uh, Naga Bo uh, the other day, also Crypto7. Is that correct? Yep, 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 exactly. Um, cool. That's one thing I really like because, you know, I can, I can talk all day and, and do monologues and things like that, but Similar to kind of what you guys are doing or just, uh, you know, people like Crypto Heartbeat and things like that. Uh, I, I do like to engage with the community and interact with the community to, to get to know them a little bit more as well. Yeah, I remember you were one of the first uh, in our comments when we start the first shows. You were there like right from the beginning, commenting, pushing it, <laughs> which was really nice. Well, well, I, I, I actually kind of cheated. So I have to thank uh, Hex Streamers. So it's like a bot on uh, Twitter that pretty much, I don't know how they do it. They must do like keywords or something, but they, uh, they pretty much retweet all of the, mm. the new streamers. So once again, I'm not sure what they're using to actually scrape that data and find out who's, you know, qualifiable and who's not, but that's where I saw your guys' channel and, you know, same mm. thing, uh, you know, uh, subscribed and, and liked. And I think, uh, that's something that the rest of the community should be a little bit better about kind of leading by example and doing because once again mm -hmm. we can all succeed together and really you know have those numbers rise yeah yeah and it would I be agree. nice to pass the 1k like you said it but also slow and steady is important and yeah. focus on yeah. content i think because before you just do shout outs you know and yeah. but also as you said um rising tide lifts all boats so we all win from that if we support each other yeah, well, and I actually didn't even see that, that your guys' channel was was just a little bit, uh, I had it on the other page here, but just kind of like a few months old and stuff. So that's yeah. uh, that's actually really impressive what you guys are doing on a consistent basis. And, you know, uh, you guys do a really good job as far as like follow Thank through and, and scheduling the streams and things like that. So it's really well uh, orchestrated. And, and once again, uh, I forget who mentioned it, maybe it was RG3, but but there's like a second wave of, you know, uh, you know, Richard Hart followers, right? You know, Hex, yeah. PulseX, Pulse Chain streamers yeah. that I think are just really doing a super good job. I agree totally. Uh, I, we also uh, met uh, a lot of, uh, you could say, Pulsecans or people who are interested in Pulse Chain in London at the two-year anniversary who were not in Hex, which was surprise, uh, surprise, uh, surprising. But this also uh, shows the fact that a lot of people potentially can uh, come into the Hex ecosystem through actually the gateway, through Pulse Chain. So I'm really excited about the Pulse Chain launch. How about yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, you kind of mentioned, hey, Pulse Chain being uh, a gateway entrance for, say, Hex. Um, you know, a lot of us didn't expect the fees to go from because I remember at the very beginning, yeah. uh, Ethereum gas was super, super low. And, you know, it yeah. was literally like a penny to send or to uh, to end stake was maybe a couple of pennies. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, as far as Pulse Chain goes, I would say that that definitely is a, you know, like a catalyst for, um, you know, because Hex kind of hit a plateau with, with say, the, the gas fees and some of these other things. And Pulse Chain is definitely going to allow that to, to break through and you know, reach the next milestone. Yeah, absolutely. But we're still approaching 80K stakers. So even though the situation is tough right now, uh, it's still growing. And then when Pulse is out, I think first Pulse go, goes viral, brings more into Hex, and then also it will be easier to be in Hex with Pulse. So you have both going for yourself. Yeah, it's it's exciting. You know, anything that, that Richard Hart does, um, you know, it, it has intention and it's got, you know, it, it's not just to, uh, you know, just to do a crypto or anything, right? It, it serves a purpose. Um, so yeah, with, with mm -hmm. Hex, initially I thought, man, what a genius idea, right? The, the programmable yield, things like that. 
Um, and then you've got Pulse Chain, which is you know going to beat Ethereum 2.0 to its launch. And then once again, you know, you've got Pulse X, which is going to be kind of like you know kind of like the replacement for say like you know Uniswap, or it's at least going to be where a lot of the uh, you know automated market maker trading is done on a decentralized exchange. Mm -hmm. And and what of the three you just mentioned is for you the the most mind blowing, the nicest piece of engineering. Well, it's it's a it's a tough question, right? Because you know, Hex was launched December second, twenty nineteen, and you know, obviously, uh, Pulse Chain's not out yet. Neither is Pulse X. So you know, you kind of have like a I don't know, I guess maybe like an unfair advantage as far as like the first mover being Hex, and then the other two being uh, you know Pulse Chain and Pulse X, kind of as the the market had a need for it. Um, what what was the question? Um, out of the free pulse X, pulse and hex, like which one would you say is the finest piece of engineering? Oh, right, right, right. Um, that's tough. I mean, it, yeah, that's really tough. I don't know. I would say probably maybe like pulse chain or pulse X, only for the fact that they're completely deflationary. Um, you know, mm -hmm. hex has the the three point six nine percent, you know, annual inflation rate, things like that. Um, and when you look at something like Pulse Chain, the fact that once again it's beating Ethereum 2.0 to its launch, so it's burning 25% of the fees. Um, I think also it, it's it's to answer your question, it's like a tie between Pulse X and Pulse Chain because once again yeah. they're both deflationary. Um, but then Pulse X kind of has some interesting mechanic uh, mechanics that seem a little bit different than say Pulse Chain. Or Pulse Chain is obviously like the network, the layer one, mm -hmm. but something like Pulse X, um, if it does the buy and burn that you know none of us can promise or guarantee, but you know might happen, uh, I think something like Pulse X would would honestly probably win in my in my uh, opinion out of all three, you know Pulse Chain and Hex. But once again, it's mm -hmm. really tough because you know uh, I think they all serve different purposes, um, right? Exactly. Yep. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah. For, for for me personally, like I really like Hex because it's a finished product. So um, it's just like an application on top of a network um, that I really feel attracted to, especially because of uh, its game theory. But as you mentioned, uh, the the Pulse Chain network is uh, will be way more dynamic, right? It's not a finished product; it will evolve. Um, there will be projects uh, or products on uh, on top of that that will build. So there will be way more dynamic, and this will also uh, bring uh, more exposure to uh, some products like Hex. So uh, we can expect a lot of um, surprises there for sure. Absolutely, and I think uh, Pulse Chain could be really the vehicle not only for Hex and private investors, but also um companies i've i've seen companies they've been thinking about blockchain data storage in any kind of case and that ethereum was also a topic that it's uh, too full they've been talking about workarounds the one that i saw polygon and um you know pulse chain could all just solve this cheaper faster better so absolutely exciting. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> So speaking about the the uh, explosion of, of YouTube streamers, what I would like to see in the future, uh, and I would like to get a comment from you, Bren, is that uh, mm -hmm. we put a little bit more effort into coordination because it happened already that we were live streaming. So basically, we we try to uh, we stream uh, every Tuesday uh, at the same time, but it already happened that uh, we were there was there was another hex live stream at the same time, and I also witnessed a couple couple of times already when there were multiple oh, yeah. live streams at the same time and i think if we have yeah. some slots uh, free and we can be flexible all of us maybe um a little bit effort of coordination would benefit the whole ecosystem what is your take on that so you know it's it's a good observation um i remember the first time that this happened as far as you know simultaneous streams and etc um, I don't know, maybe it was like six months into Hex being out. And and we had initially said the same thing as far as consensus. Hey, you mm -hmm. know, there's the, the hexstreamers.com, right? Which mm -hmm. is what I was saying where I found you guys in the first place was the, the Twitter bot. The same guy yeah. that runs the website runs the um, 
So, so anyways, as far as all of the, uh, the schedules go, yeah, you know, if you can be flexible and kind of, you know, work around or route around someone else's schedule, that's great. But, um, you know, then, then you got people that, that don't really do a schedule. Um, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, you guys do, and, and I do, um, but then there's, you know, some streamers that don't do a schedule at all. And then it's like, you know, what good is planning if, uh, you know, you think you're good for a stream and then someone else just starts their stream. Yeah. Uh, cause it once happened again, to you, right? When Hexa went live, you, you also cut short oh, your stream. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, uh, you know, here's the thing that I will say is that, um, by no means is, is having any of that, like the, the multiple people streaming at the same time. Um, I wouldn't say that that's a bad thing. I would actually say exactly. it's the opposite. It's a, yeah, exactly. it's a good thing. Um, but yep. you're right. You're right. Where, um, Hey, you only have so much attention span and so much focus. And so if, if, you know, cause I, I didn't realize that either that, uh, Hexo was streaming and I don't know, maybe it was like 13 minutes into my stream, but yeah, yeah. Uh, it works out really good, man, because, uh, once again, you've got, you've got a community, so it's not, you know, as far as hacks or all of this success, you know, you can't all attribute it to say Richard or, you know, Hexo or, or one certain person, you know, it's the, the whole community as a whole. So I think that that's amazing that, you know, people are, uh, you know, streaming. And, and once again, it does seem to be more often that, that, yeah, you know, there's multiple people yeah. streaming at once, which is cool. And the only thing that I'll say uh, Cause there was someone that, you know, used to have like the opposing opinion, like, you know, Hey, why are you guys streaming over me, et cetera. But uh, you know, people don't have to watch the stream live, right? They can watch the exactly. video, you know, after it's live streamed, it's just post, you know, post recorded and they can the just watch it later. The fact that we have, uh, and I totally agree with you, the fact that we have uh, multiple live streams going on sometimes at the same time is just a sign that the, uh, the, the community, the ecosystem is growing. Um, but I also uh, think that the lack of uh, co uh, coordination effort um, is also resulting in, 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 in some streamers maybe don't have a, have a regular schedule. Of course, there will be always uh, exceptions, but um, I think it, it, it 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 may benefit the echo the, the the community if we at least try a little bit. So I have I think also about hexstreamers.com that we coordinate with them. It's very easy to to um, to identify all the streamers, right? Maybe to have like one group session with them, like a dedicated Telegram channel where uh, we could uh, ask uh, for the guys who can have a little bit more more schedule into their show that to put them in actually. To make it a little bit uh, less, uh, like less overlapping, you could say. But yeah, this this was just something that that came to my mind. But of course, it's a it's a it's a very positive sign. It's very good for the community. It's exploding, and every new streamer is a win for the for Hex. Right. No, that's that's a good point. I mean, you know, similar to to what you mentioned, or even Hexologist. When I first started streaming, uh, I didn't really have a schedule. And mm -hmm. now I do, you know, it's, it's Sundays at, you know, 2 PM Pacific standard time. Um, but I, I agree, you know, like you mentioned, Hey, you know, if the people that are, you know, quote unquote content creators or doing streams, you know, if they can find a schedule that works for them, then, then yeah, it's a little bit more consistent, uh, as far as, Hey, you know, when to expect, as opposed to, you know, you know, not having a schedule and the things being completely random. So. Yeah, you're definitely right. I mean, you know, there's there's always room for improvement, but but once again, when you have like so uh when you have like anyone but yourself, then it's not really, you know, kind of in your control and stuff, but but I agree with what you're saying that, you know, uh yeah, I think all streamers should kind of find a schedule maybe that mm -hmm. that works well for them or that kind of works for their, you know, their lifestyle and then, you know, maybe Maybe try and stick to kind of a schedule type of thing, but but once again, I think that this is uh this isn't something that's going to be going away anytime soon. As far as yeah, yeah. you know, like there's only going to be more and more streamers and things like that. So yeah. I think it's Absolutely. really just a you know it's a it's a sign of like you mentioned uh you know us still being success. pre viral, but a whole bunch of people yeah success a whole bunch of people coming on board and and actually you know wanting to participate and. And wanting to, you know, put put their opinions out there, um, because a lot of people in the very beginning, 
And this is why, you know, we got to give props to hexologists and Serena yeah, Alonzi yeah, yeah. and, you know, um, they stood in the face of, you know, giants, if you will, where, mm -hmm. um, you know, now Hex has the 10,000 X and all this other stuff. But mm -hmm. definitely in the beginning, mm -hmm. it was, uh, you know, a whole bunch of adversity that that we were facing. And yeah, so so shout out to all the people that that are seeing that, hey, this is a legitimate product, like you mentioned, it's completed. And, and now they can kind of feel comfortable, you know, uh, jumping on board. It's it's not the the BitConnect of 2017 or Ponzi. It's it's something that's here to stay. Hundred percent. And uh, I also remember back then when Hexa was streaming. Uh, that was actually one of the reasons why I uh, became more public, or at least I got more active on Twitter, like do the bare minimum, because I saw a lot of attacks. You know, so I wanted to contribute from my side uh, a little bit. So I started to comment, you know, uh, create a, a hex specific Twitter, um, creating some posts and so on, just to contribute a little bit. So I think also this negativity, this external negativity also bond us more together, right? And makes us yep. stronger or made us even stronger in the beginning. Yeah. And the fact no, that people yeah. decide to do it themselves, like it's not a central agency with, with a central money basket. It's the people themselves that decide to take action. Yep. Yeah, I uh, I forget who was saying it. It might have been funding Jim with the uh, the My Life is Awesome, you know, the lit uh, interview. But he was kind of talking about like, you know, there's a certain, I don't know, camaraderie or community would say Hex. And, and you're right. Um, his his analogy that he was comparing the Hex community to was like like the military, you know, when when you're mm -hmm. going through, when, you know, when a group of people is going through challenges. Yeah, yeah. it makes them stronger and kind of bonds them together um so yeah i think that that's really cool and and uh, i forget who kind of mentioned it before might have been johnny chaos a long time ago but but the hexagons definitely like you know we take care of our own and, and we're almost like piranhas where hey i i'm i'm not really on twitter much anymore i kind of just use it to to post and stuff but um mm -hmm. if you see someone talking crap or you know calling it a scam and things like this then you know they're going to get met with like a whole army of responses and and you know yeah. people that are that are genuinely trying to help like you know we're not trying to ad hominem attack people we're trying to to educate um, so I think that's really cool and um, you know I think what we have with the potential that we have right now um, I, I think this is really just the beginning like we've got a solid uh, you know foundation poured and a structure built and this is really just that you know, vertical integration for like future success. I agree hundred percent. And speaking about like gr the growth of the community, I also wanted to give a shout out um, to uh, Hex Misia PL. Um, we will speak shortly about, uh, and we will speak in a minute about like Twitter spaces. This is an upcoming, very interesting uh, channel for reaching new people. But on Saturday, uh, X Grosh, the host, which is a very popular uh, hexagon, hosted this uh, Twitter space in Polish. And we were average, uh, uh, average 300 uh, people in the space. So nice. I wanted to give also a shout out to them. Uh, they also tried to, to onboard Polish speaking uh, community. And it was a very interesting talk. So I had the chance to participate there. And I think they hosted, they will host it or he will host it or try at least to host it regularly on uh, Saturdays. So uh, this Twitter space, I think it's a very, has a lot of potential to onboard new people. Yeah. We saw a couple of very nice Twitter spaces, of course, from Hex Orca, from Jay Future. I saw more and more spaces. Uh, Belliot Brand, how did you experience the spaces so far? What's your take on that? Yep. I'll, uh, I'll kind of mimic, you know, or echo what you were saying where, you know, it really is an, an up and coming thing. And, you know, the, the potential really is there. Uh, Richard talks about, you know, people, because uh, his, his YouTube channel, you know, it's been banned a time or two or three times. And mm -hmm. we just saw it most recently. And people are like, oh, why don't you post on, on DLive or, or DTube and things like that, Richard? And he's like, well, dude, you know, you got to go where the attention is, where, where the yeah. fish are, right? You know, if you're, if you're fishing in like the ocean and there's no fish, then, you know, you're, you're kind of doing nothing. And so the point yeah. is, is yeah, as far as the Twitter spaces go, that's an absolutely amazing opportunity. And, 
uh, kind of just like a new group of, uh, of people. And, you know, a lot of it's kind of, uh, I've seen a lot more people would say like the NFT stuff or just kind of just getting into crypto. And once again, these are the, not the people that would be watching the, you know, the crypto videos on YouTube or they wouldn't have mm-hmm. heard about Hex because they, you know, I, I just, yeah, I think that there's a whole bunch of opportunity. And once mm-hmm. again, I think it's like a, you know, it's a different platform than say YouTube where YouTube is kind of video and audio, but the, uh, the Twitter space is just being audio only. And the fact that you can kind of just lock your phone and just listen to it in the background, kind of like say yeah. like a Telegram uh, yeah. audio chat. Easy to use. For sure. Yeah. And as you mentioned, it, uh, I think it's super easy and super convenient uh, to just um, join and uh, just tune in. Uh, I am I think it's not possible to filter currently the spaces, so you just have to scroll down. Uh, did you guys make the same uh, experience? You can't uh, I was wondering, because like usually you would have one or two suggestions at the top for Twitter right. spaces. Maybe because you so... follow the host, right? This is usually the... The reason why some certain uh, spaces being advertised at the top, but you have no manual filter options, I would say. Yeah, it's kind of you're kind of dependent because right now it's it's suggesting me hashtag Trudeau at a space with 400 people. Mm -hmm. But I still some when I scroll down, I still see uh, a couple of like crypto related uh, spaces, and I was wondering if. there are just very few spaces currently, so <laughs> they just uh, show up, or they they are kind of like curated by Twitter for me, so they see that I'm interested in crypto-related topics. Nice. Um, but and Meister, the... can we expect you to be a speaker on the the hex uh, space you just showed us? So I was a speaker because uh, usually uh, these these Twitter spaces are very open micish, you could say. So if you request the mic, I think uh, they will. Um, quite fast um, bring you in so i encourage everyone who would like to participate ask questions to just take the opportunity to um to request the mic especially in external groups right because when you once you got the, the you got the mic uh, you will you will be listed at the very top and of course try to contribute something uh, meaningful but this also means for you that your 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 account gains more followers because all the listeners and as i mentioned in hexmesia for example there were like roughly uh, approximately 300 to 350 and usually when you speak and contribute some intelligent stuff right um people are like uh, very, very likely to will follow you give you a, will uh, give you a follow and this is i think very lucrative to reach out to other communities yeah. so more gener- general twitter spaces about cryptocurrencies um yeah and so. there's another benefit like if you ask your questions in this big audience and they answer you you have kind of this uh safe net where a lot of people are listening it's harder for them or it's safer if you ask a question about safety or what to do or how does it work because other people are listening they cannot bullshit you that easy you have this uh, social consensus network (laughs) going on if you will so that's a good platform no it's important like you mentioned uh if if someone's got uh, a question about yeah whether it's crypto security or or honestly, whether it's any topic in general, um, you know, kind of Richard talks about like one of the worst things that you can have is someone that's, uh, you know, they don't realize that the information, whether they do or don't, they don't realize the information that they're saying is, is not true, right? And mm-hmm. so they speak about it yeah. confidently. And like you mentioned, whether it's, uh, you know, Telegram, whether it's the Hex, you know, Pulse or Pulse X, it's a, it's a unique opportunity that we haven't had in the past where, or yeah, if you got a question about security or something like this, you know, it can be verified among the 150 people that are also listening. It's a lot harder, like you said, to just, you know, BS to, to bullshit someone and to, yeah. to kind of scam them yeah. if it's in a public forum. And then the other thing also about that public forum is, uh, you know, I know funding Jim, you know, because you mentioned the, the spaces and things like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Usually it's just the people that I follow and it'll say like, recommended so and so is in this kind of space but uh mm-hmm. funding jim had joined some sort of some sort of space right uh, yeah. on crypto and uh, same thing he was talking to he, he wasn't you know directly shilling pulse chain or anything like that but he was you know eloquently and educating mm-hmm. uh, the people in that twitter space that hey 
without kind of saying pulse chain, he had mentioned, hey, you know, copy of, um, you know, the ERC 721s, right. the, the ERC 20s. So once again, uh, it's a really good opportunity for, for new people, right? Because the Hex community is already, uh, you know, big community growing. But like Richard kind of talks about, like mm -hmm. the, the most important thing not only is outbound messaging, yeah. but to have new people constantly coming in. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I totally agree. Um, even even uh, some very, uh, you could say, um, less scalable outreach is, is uh, also important. Uh, like uh, if, if, uh, when we were in London and uh, uh, went to a bar or to a pub, right? Um, usually you sooner or later uh, or rather sooner than later, the cryptocurrency mm -hmm. topic pops up, right? And people are, get very interested in, in hacks. So we we were thinking also of printing some like business cards. So when uh, the the guys or the listeners wake up in the next morning, you know, when they heard about this API and they were not sure if they were dreaming or not, that they have still this <laughs> business card as a proof. So I think this sort of like old school outbound messaging is also yep. interesting and uh, any outbound helps actually. And also it helps the the other the, uh, the the counterpart as well right like if i for example if i were onboarded by somebody else to hex i would be very thankful i can imagine uh so you also do the other part uh, a favor to give the information to spread the information yeah well and, and then same thing <clears throat> you know richard talks about uh scams having you know a huge advertising budget right to to buy advertisements or to you know, get their message out because once again, uh, whether it's a scam or whether it's a legitimate project or a product, you know, the, the most important thing is getting new people onboarded. And uh, yeah, man, I think that all forms of advertising are absolutely fantastic, right? You know, you've got people like Crypto Heartbeat that he had mentioned it before, but he mentioned it during the uh, interview with Richard on the, the Hex conference that and I remember seeing this this uh, this advertisement, but uh, it was a, an advertisement on television, you know, like a hex advertisement. And um, anyway, so that was one form of advertisement. Once again, we've seen, um, you know, for like like European sports, and we've seen, mm -hmm. uh, I think, in like the UK, right? You've seen those bus ads, and yeah, yeah, you know, taxis. Yeah, you know, I've gotten some stickers before, and then you know, the other thing too is like the merch. So you mm -hmm. know, people might not realize this, but uh, you know, the, the actual hex logo itself is copyrighted all rights reserved and things like this. And so mm. there was a whole bunch of people that were really hesitant to make any merch stores or associate it with their name. Right. Because they didn't want to be like, you know, targeted or, or prosecuted by Richard, but, yeah. uh, long story short, it seems to be kind of just like an unspoken thing that, that yeah, it benefits hexagons and things like that. And it's not like they're making much money anyways, off of apparel. Um, so now like you mentioned, there's there's a whole bunch of different forms of advertising. There's the Twitter spaces, all these other different things. But then mm -hmm. you've got like the merch. And and people, once again, you know, people have heard about Bitcoin a couple of times, right? Before maybe they actually like look into it. That's kind of how it works with just many other things. Um, and same thing I would say with like the merchandise, right? Whether it's Hex, yeah. Pulse Chain, Pulse X. I think they're uh, really cool logos that people look at and they're like, yeah. huh, what's that? Merch is fun. Like I bought my mom a t-shirt and it said, uh, catch the dip, not feelings. It's it's just fun to buy merch <laughs> and wear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We also ordered a, a bigger uh, package from, I think from the US with merch, but unfortunately as international parcel services are really a pain in the ass, I have to say, yep. Uh, yep. it happens so often, unfortunately. And it got lost on 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 the way. So um, uh, I I would in the future order more locally. So we are based in Europe. So would try to order from from. They from have uh, also hex merch on Amazon, Meister. Mm, yeah. Nice. Have to take That'd a look at awesome. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, one thing, uh, Bren, you mentioned that uh, the hex logo uh, is uh, the 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 ci the the identity is is protected uh, is ip yep, yep, from yep. of richard um so all the all the uh, merchants do they have to ask for the permission to print it on the shirt so, or how is it so, going yeah so that's kind of like the untold secret because uh you know once again it's you know the the way that it works is richard's talked about it just like with securities laws or anything else 
Um, but specifically with the all rights reserved, uh, whether whether Richard would actually agree with the merch being done or not, um, as far as the law goes to kind of maintain that copyright, uh, mm. he has to be the one that's like defending it, right? So he's not going to directly say, you know, because because sticker uh, sticker guy did this and shout out to him. Um, he had done this. Uh, he had asked this question at the, the hex conference, and he had said, "Hey, Richard, you know, can I do this this thing?" And Richard was mm -hmm. saying, "Like, no, because once again, it's copyrighted." Um, but but yeah. So just the point is, is that I don't think anyone has asked him for for permission. It's kind of yeah. just like do the thing and and ask for forgiveness later, because once again, Richard, uh, you know, he's spoken about the nuances. Uh, where he yeah. can't, it's a total gray area, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I consider Richard a very honest and, and fair guy. So if you do like normal outbound merchandise or shirts or stickers, whatever, that benefit the ecosystem, of course, he will not do any action against it. But if you yeah. use it to kind of rip people off because it's maybe too expensive, you know, like high, way too expensive or you associate with like some scam accusations, so you use it more in a negative way, then the, pro the, the right, uh, like this property, uh, intellectual property mm -hmm. may be of use for Richard because he can then stop it by, by law. Yep. Yep. I totally agree. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's just the thing. Uh, like you mentioned, yeah, if there was something nefarious or, or someone that kind of had bad intent, then, then yeah, Richard would probably look into that a little bit more, but yeah, as far as it goes, as you, you know, yeah. as you mentioned, sticker guy, he also asked if he can distribute the, uh, the signing of Richard Hart because yep. uh, Richard yeah. Hart signed his stickers. <laughs> and there he also said, no, you can't do that because you know, his, his signing is, uh, then again, something else, you know, yep. you don't want anyone to have your signing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, once again, it, it's, it's, uh, yeah, and I'm not saying he should or shouldn't, but, uh, but yeah, it is one of those things that, you know, <laughs> a, a lot of people, I mean, I haven't heard of one person having any problems with, you know, them making merch and things like this. Um, yeah, like yeah. you mentioned, as, as long as it's not like an, an a uh, exorbitant amount of money where it would almost be like usury, you know, um, yeah. then I think Richard's totally fine. But, but yeah, once again, that's kind of like, uh, you know, some, some things aren't completely binary black and white. There, there is a little bit of gray and, and Richard's really good at explaining those types of things and, and the nuances, uh, why Hex is not a security, why he has to defend the brand, et cetera. Yeah. hundred percent agree. Uh, yeah, really nice, really nice. Glad we touched upon that topic. Um, Bren, we usually try also to talk a little bit about the past. You of, obviously, you are very high profile in the Hex uh, community, but can you share one more time uh, the story with us, how you got uh, into Hex, how, how you discovered it uh, in the first place? Can you share that with us? Yeah, yeah, of course. So um, pretty much, I mean, how I got into Hex was kind of just uh, how I got into crypto, you know? When I first got into crypto, um, I had heard about like Bitcoin and, and Litecoin and and you hear these narratives, you know, like, um, you know, like Richard talks about, oh, uh, Ethereum's programmable money or uh, Bitcoin store value, et cetera. So the narrative I had heard was because I was into precious metals at the time and uh, I had heard, hey, you know, Bitcoin is like the digital gold and then, uh, you know, Litecoin is like the digital silver. So that's what initially got me into, uh, yeah, I guess just into crypto mm -hmm. in, in 2017. Oh. And then, right. uh, and then so, so the thing is, is, you know, Richard Hart, I mean, he was a Bitcoin maximalist for the longest time. Um, and long story short, uh, I was on Reddit. I didn't realize how big crypto was. I thought mm -hmm. there was just, hey, you know, uh, Bitcoin and Litecoin and all these other ones. I didn't yeah. realize it's like a whole subsection, like a whole different community, a whole different world that's, you know, going on and, and living there. But you wouldn't know if you if you weren't, you know, a part of that. So long yeah. story short, someone was talking crap about Richard. They had said like, oh, hey, you know, this guy is the spam king, blah, 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 Bitcoin maximalist. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I ended up saying like, hey, who's this Richard Hart guy? Because once again, I didn't realize mm -hmm. how big because I've, I've been on YouTube for a very long time. But I didn't yeah. realize that there was a huge like uh, crypto community and like different, you know, quote unquote influencers. Mm -hmm. So I go search up Richard Hart, you know, see his candelabra and all this other stuff. And 
it was about March 15th, uh, 2017 that I had, you know, stumbled across his videos. Super and, early. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, the thing, the thing that I'll say, and, you know, I really, uh, appreciate my parents and stuff for, for giving me, you know, good intuition or like people skills and kind of instincts and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. but I like to think that I got a good bullshit meter, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. my, my grandpa's got a saying where like, Hey, you know, you can't bullshit a bullshitter type of deal. And just the point <laughs> is, is that I, I like to always verify and, and to never trust. And so when I Do verified, you have siblings? Hey, yeah, I got three older brothers. Yeah, I'm the youngest. Yep, yep. Because um, I think that I also uh, something you learn with them. <laughs> yeah, I know that's true. But yeah, so just the point was is that stumbled across Richard. I had found, and I'm and I'm glad that I did this, and I'm glad I learned this lesson a long time ago to always verify, never trust. Because uh, once again, if I just listened to that person that was talking crap uh, about Richard in the Reddit comment. And I just, you know, oh, I'm not going to research it, even though I was curious, you know, uh, I'm not going to research it. Then, you know, who knows if I ever would have stumbled across Richard's videos or, you know, Hex um, ever again. And so mm -hmm. anyways, I'd, uh, I'd been following Richard uh, ever since, you know, literally on a daily basis. Um, you know, his first videos were the self-help and all of that, which, which I really admired and I thought was really cool. And, uh, yes. oh, yeah, what I was saying a second ago was just, I got a, I got a good BS meter, you know, and, um, I could always just tell, Hey, you know, Richard was genuine and same mm -hmm. thing. You know, you see all of the, uh, the, the, the peacocking, I guess the social signaling, right. The, you know, before it was just a candelabra and stuff like that. And now it's like, you know, really at a certain scale with, uh, you know, the Louis V and the, the million dollars of watches and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. but I was able to see all pass through that, yes. right. Because, the information was was what I was there for, you know, not what the person's wearing, not what they're representing. And exactly. so long story short, Richard, he, uh, you know, he had always just spoken the truth. Um, yep. Or even if he was, even if he was wrong, which is very rare, um, even if he was wrong, right, he, uh, he gave, you know, his, his logic for, for why he felt a certain way or why he had a certain position. So I've uh, been following Richard for, you know, since all the way then, uh, March 15th, 2017. And uh, what really kind of sealed the deal is, like I said, I was following some other people too. Um, so I was following some people that were, you know, in the Litecoin community. And that was pretty much like the main crypto that I was in. But uh, it wasn't until Richard had called the bear market. You know, he had said, hey, guys, it's over. There's the bear market. Um, it wasn't until then that I realized, oh, dude, this guy is experienced, man. He really knows what he's talking about because he mm -hmm. called, you know, the bear market of 2017 called the bear market uh you know of 2021 and so yeah you know his uh you know, all of the things that he had kind of mentioned and said and stood by you know they stood the test of time mm -hmm. i totally agree with you I, I made the same experience that all back in 2017 already you um if you have a good bs detector as you mentioned that uh, you could see that he really distinguished himself from other streamers, because even though, um, and I think this is where uh, many people uh, fail the test, even though he has um, some, you could say, uh, bling bling surface, right? That uh, can make you judge him too fast. Uh, speaking about the the chandelier and the the watches yeah. and the the the, uh, the luxury brands and so on. So usually in the modern world, this is associated with you could say like a little bit do douchey attitude or you yeah, know like a exactly. show off or something. But this actually doesn't really matter, right? Like in the end of the day, it's about the protocol. It's about the the philosophy of, uh, of, of of the real cryptocurrencies like decentralization on custody and so on and uh, richard always lived up to that and if you pass this eq iq test and you don't judge him by like um like uh the the the, the fashion he wears or, or by his room then uh, you would really quickly discover that he he doesn't bullshit you a lot and mm. you could see you can take out a, you can get a lot of value out of his streams already back then yeah. Well, and, and, and like you mentioned, um, you know, you, you it, it's really easy to see like, oh, hey, you know, like you mentioned, uh, clearly he had put in a lot of thought for the candelabra, for the Swarovski crystals, things like yeah. that. But Richard also talks about, um, and he's talked about this in the sci-fi book, or he's talked about this just in general of, of his strategy of, of what he's doing. And it is social signaling. Yeah, um, it absolutely. It is 
it is also, you know, trying to not attack, but it's trying to, uh, I guess, advertise to say, like you mentioned, the, the Louis Vuitton, the Rolex, you know, the yeah, people that have absolutely. money. And so they can kind of, you know, because Richard's mentioned this before that, um, you know, there, there's people that talk to talk and then there's people that walk the walk. So Richard's mentioned for a long time since 2011, you know, he was mining uh, full Bitcoin blocks, et cetera. But, you know, anyone, I guess, can say that, right? And so people would always, you know, they they would uh, they would say that he was lying or bluffing when he said that, hey, you know, he was very wealthy or retired since a certain age. And so he had said most recently on one of his videos that like, hey, you know, some people, uh, if, you, if you tell them what, what you're trying to do, they won't understand. So you kind of just have to like show them or, you know, let them know why you're, you know, doing the Louis V and all that stuff. And so the last thing that I'll say about that is uh, I do, um, you know, commend, I guess, and I appreciate Richard uh, saying that, hey, you know, he's buying the Louis V, the Rolex, so the other hexagons don't have to, right? Yeah. He's kind of yeah, doing yeah. that specifically as a certain marketing <laughs> tactic, but, you know, you see some sense, other people. Right? Yeah. Because he has he's a just, lot of yeah. followers as well, so he has also some exposure that may also, like, for example, if there are some some other communities, right? And they see Richard, okay, he has 100K followers, uh, Louis V and so on. This may attract their opinion. Of course, everybody can do with his or her money whatever uh, they want, right? But I think it doesn't make really sense to to spend six figures and you have to, in the end of the day, you may have to sell Hex to buy some Rolex and then use it as marketing material. If you don't have a lot of followers, it doesn't make much sense. So... I would not mm -hmm. recommend to do that if it's purely for marketing reasons. If you just like Rolexes and you want to buy it for yourself, this is totally fine, right? But I think you need a lot of exposure where it makes sense. And Richard already mentioned that as well live during the Hex meetup in Denmark and Copenhagen for everyone who wants to check out this part. It was fairly in the beginning, in the first 20 minutes or something. Yeah, um, I also really love how Richard then goes on and says he's actually a really cheap person and he loves it when he's out with Hexicans. <laughs> he never has to pay for dinner. <laughs> it's kind of funny with yep. the free will in the water. background. Yeah, yeah. but you know, wow. it is clever because he could have just gave the money to an advertisement agency and he would maybe have the same effect and the money would be gone. He still has the, the object itself now in his background for maybe even longer than the campaign would have lasted but this yeah. is true the signaling is important because like we can mm -hmm. say like oh only the only the the message counts and so on but actually you know if i see a stream um like for example from richard hart with a very high quality background you know the camera is super sharp it's crisp the sound is perfect um, the, the background is very good. There's a lot of like money went into it. And then when I see him uh, streaming with other guys who stream out of their like basement, you know, um, <laughs> you know, like with their yeah. with their headphones, even if you don't notice it by your like s consciously, you know, subconsciously you notice this mm -hmm. kind of stuff and you associate more value. I would say with this more quality setup. Yes, but also the contents, the uh, these kids out of the basement, they also don't offer the education Richard Hart yep. offers, exactly. you know, it's like, yeah. but even if they would the do, right? and I the think... content. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I think he, he's also like a marketing genius. So I think he knows what mm. he's doing. <laughs> we have a good marketing well, guy. Well, here. Yeah. Well, and, and you, you know, yeah, you guys mentioned how like, it, it's funny that cause Hexo even mentioned it, that when, uh, you know, when they were in London, that uh you know hexo had kind of taken richard to lunch and you know when the check <laughs> came by uh richard's like thanks hexo and uh you know the thing that i'll say about that is is once again um as someone that kind of understands character and things like that uh i really appreciate richard for being consistent with you know his his values and, and staying true to kind of what he believes in um you know because for for someone that's arguably you know a billionaire um you know, sometimes people might think that, hey, just because you have all this money, uh, you know, yeah, you might be wasting it or like you mentioned, uh, you know, throwing a whole bunch of money here and there just because you can. And I think it's cool that Richard kind of leads by example. Um, you know, he mentions, hey, you know, uh, stop trading, stop, stop drinking, uh, drinking, stop gambling, all of these different things. And uh, I think it's cool that he doesn't, once again, just 
uh, talk the talk, but he does walk the walk, right? He he leads by example, which 100%. I think is a lot more commendable yeah. than just talking about it. So once you um, you discovered uh, Richard Hart back in 2017, I imagine you continued um, following him, and uh, this is how you discovered uh, Hex, or back then it was called Bitcoin Hex. Mm. Yep, yep, yeah. So that's exactly what happened. So, so yeah. Thanks for clarifying. I, I never finished the story. So um, once again, so I'd gotten into to crypto uh, early 2017, probably like I don't know, like February or March, something like that. I uh, didn't awesome. find Richard until, you know, March 15th, but, but, um, anyways, as far as the crypto experience goes, um, once I had realized, cause I've always liked technology and things like this, I've had a computer in my room since, you know, third grade and it had the, the way bigger monitors, you know? Um, but just the point is, is that once the bear market hit, I had to ask myself, <laughs> you know, like, what am I in this for? Am I in it for the the tech, quote unquote, or am I actually in it for the gains? <laughs> you know, and I, I think uh, I think you know, obviously, hey, the tech is cool and blah blah blah, but you know, people are really in it for the gains type of deal. Mm. So, um, long story short, I had uh, held throughout the bear market all the way until you know uh, a little bit before December second, twenty nineteen, when Richard had mentioned, you know, hey, Bitcoin hacks and things like that. So it goes to show you that um, w when you've got like a bull market, wh what do they say? Like everyone's a, a winner in a bull market, something like yeah. that. Or everyone's, everyone's a right genius, a right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Everyone's a genius. That's what it was. Um, exactly. But the, the point that I was getting at is that, you know, even through the bear market and, you know, I was seeing the net worth that I, I had been uh, saving up for just dwindle down probably like mm. to 90% of, you know, to 10% of what it actually was before. Um, I had realized like, okay, you know, what, what is the, uh, you know, is all of this just speculation or is there something more to it? You know, is this just mm -hmm. a, a beanie baby or is the underlying, you know, technology behind it something that, that isn't going away, something that is useful? Um, so I'm glad that I did stick through with, uh, once again, following Richard. And so the other kind of pivotal moment too was when I had realized that, as Wales only calls it, the fake gurus. Uh, when I'd realized that there were so many fake gurus that I was following, but once again, as someone that likes to, you know, consider himself a good judge of character, um, I was uh, not behooved, but uh, I was completely ignorant or, or blindsided, right, to some of the people that I thought were legitimate. But in reality, they were just, you know, they didn't really have much, uh, you know, qualifications behind what they were talking about. You know, you mentioned like the, the basement kid. Um, so long story short, I'd realized, okay, all these other people I was following, let's unsubscribe. And then Richard, I'll just keep subscribed in the, the notification bell because he's the only one that's, you know, stayed consistent. Uh, so that's kind of what happened throughout the bear market. And then long story short, Richard had yeah. mentioned Hex and uh, been in since day one. Awesome, awesome. And uh, Belliot, I can imagine that you... Um... Uh, also got burned during or after the ICO mania, uh, more or less. I could imagine you mentioned like you were down 90%. I was wondering, once you discovered uh, Hex, and obviously back then you were already, you could say, a supporter of Richard Hart. I was wondering the fact sure. that you got burned. Um, did it lead to a situation where you kind of got a little bit allergic or like uh, ignorant towards any other coins than you could say BTC back then. So you didn't pay attention from the beginning or were you kind of like blessed or lucky that you, even though the bear market hit, you were actually pretty sharp and pretty open for new things. And this is how you, that's why you got very early involved in Hex. So did it take some time? How was the situation back then? <sighs> So that's actually a really good question because because once again, Litecoin was kind of like my my major holding and I had had, you know, mm -hmm. a handful of alts too. Um, but it was kind of just like asking myself once again, uh, there's like a little, uh, I forget what it's even called musically, but there's this little video remix of Richard Hart saying like, hey, you know, if you don't understand why the top 10 <laughs> cryptocurrencies are in the top 10, then, you know, you need to kind of reevaluate, you know, if you think you actually know about crypto, because you don't, if you can't even mention the top 10, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so I'd, I'd realized kind of early on in crypto that, um, you know, when I had first heard of 
hey, Bitcoin's the first one. And then Litecoin, like I said, was like the quote unquote digital silver. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, wait, you know, people can just fork this like, like, oh, yeah, Charlie Lee, he just forked the code and changed this parameter and that parameter. Yeah. Um, so long story short, yeah. And in, in any bubble and any kind of speculation and stuff, there is, you know, not even 80, 20, but there's like a 99 to like, you know, 1% of stuff that, you know, succeeds versus stuff that fails. And so kind of just following Richard throughout the whole time, he had, uh, you know, continued educating us through the bear market. And uh, when you mentioned allergic, um, I, I wouldn't say that I was allergic per se, but I was just kind of like, almost like cold shoulder, like uh, almost like emotionless yeah. for crypto um, until Hex came out. Gotcha. <laughs> and then I just gotcha. sold everything for that. Oh, wow, you, really? Like all the other assets, you went straight yeah. after yep. launch into Hex? Well, so, so what happened is when, when Richard had called the, uh, you know, the bear market, um, you know, Litecoin literally went up to like $420 and then it went down all the way to like maybe like 29, 30, something like that when I was initially getting into it. And uh, yeah, when uh, when Richard had mentioned Hex and Bitcoin Hex, I had realized, okay, I really don't know diddly squat uh, about crypto or this space, right? I was following these other people I thought were legitimate. Turns out they're not. Richard was the only legitimate yeah. one. So when Richard had mentioned, hey, you know, he's, you know, first off, he's had this track record as far as being successful early on. I just realized, you know, hey, um, I had some wins. I had some losses in crypto, but Hex and Bitcoin Hex was like my absolute Hail Mary, where once again, it was, it was damn near at the bottom of the bear market. And I, you know, sold all the Litecoin for Bitcoin and then did the little free claim with, with the Bitcoin that I had had. And then sold that for Ethereum and kind of just did the adoption amplifier. Um, awesome. But I kind of just, yeah, just kind of separated myself. I wasn't allergic per se to the other cryptos, but mm -hmm. you know, really just followed Richard and kind of just nice, listened to man. his. So kind of like your IQ EQ told you this is uh, this is the real deal. It was it, well, and it was like it was like a damn hail mary because once again I was thinking like uh, you know hey <laughs> if if this freaking doesn't hit then, uh, you know, I'm done with crypto forever, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, you know, once again, experiencing a bear market and uh, it's not just with crypto, but with real estate, a lot of people buy the tops and things like that. But mm. I'm happy I stayed through and I'm, I'm happy that literally ever since I got into crypto, I've, I've you know, been in it pretty yeah. much every single day, so. This is an amazing story, Brandon. I also can imagine that this this uh, bear market into 18 to 19 you could say uh, this is also um, i i would even state invaluable because the next side cycle will come right and if you lift through one of these you your bs detector even got bigger right for for like some stupid projects mm -hmm. i remember also back then when i was reading a couple of white paper i actually had no <laughs> investment experience at all or like very little um, but when I read this white paper, which, which was usually, which was a very new concept, I think for all of us, right? Like a, a fancy mm -hmm. white yep. paper, like nothing built. And when you read it, you, I, 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 when I read it, I thought I discovered fire. I thought like I'm the first one. This is amazing <laughs> and so on. And this was all vapor where most of it like failed, you know? Yep. So once you experienced it uh, firsthand, I think, um, you get a pretty good skin, uh, thick skin for the next uh, bullshit cycle you could say mm. um so i'm also quite thankful for to make this experience uh, as uh, as long as your losses were not too big uh, do you see the same same sort of yeah no i i uh, i definitely agree um i would i would say that yeah i agree 100% with that cool cool awesome uh yeah uh, so then uh i think the rest is history like the aa launched uh, the participation the community started to grow slowly but surely um in these first you could say two years of hex do you have a couple of like key moments for you personally um in regards to the hex community mm -hmm. maybe some event uh can you share uh here a couple of insights with us sure so, so when I first got into the, you know, so Richard was the first one that introduced me to, to Telegram, right? He had done uh, t.me slash hex crypto. And I was like, oh, okay, let me join this little group that Richard's doing because, you know, I'm going to invest in the, the Bitcoin hex at the time. 
Um, one of the things that really took me aback at first was, you know, there's there was, I mean, I'm just one person, right, that's been following Richard since, you know, since 2017 consistently. There's a there's a you know a whole handful of people uh, that have done so as well, and so that was really cool for someone. Once again, didn't really read Richard's comments uh, as far as his YouTube videos. Uh, kind of just listened to the information, and that was pretty much it. Um, but then when the community itself had kind of been created, been formed, uh, that was something that was really special because uh, once again, it's uh, it really is a grassroots movement. And I kind of blanked out on what I was going to say when you mentioned the ICO thing. But the point, the point to that is, once again, the 99% to the, the 1%, you know, anyone can make promises. And that's why mm. a lot of the, the ICOs, you know, yeah, were unregistered securities and things like this. Yeah. And so when people first heard Richard talking about, hey, you know, this is designed to do 10,000x in, in two and a half years, because that's what Ethereum did. It's designed to do this, this, and this. You know, a whole bunch yeah. of people, they called BS and they said, hey, you know, no way in hell did someone just create, you know, programmable yield, the first crypto to actually do that, even though Bitcoin's been 13 years old. So it goes yeah. to show you that, hey, you know, just because, you know, Bitcoin is, you know, 13 years old or it's the first um, doesn't mean that, you know, it's a, it's a logical evaluation for it to be the, the highest market cap, right? I think, yeah. you know, utility and some of these other things really kind of play into that. I just want to say shout out to Richard for kind of, you know, helping me because anyone can have an idea. Um, so yeah. he's kind of helped me understand the difference between an idea or like a promise coin. You know, you look at Ethereum with, uh, you know, Ethereum 2.0 or Cardano with all these other things. And uh, Richard's one that, you know, he doesn't just talk the talk, but he walks the walk. He actually delivers, unlike most people. I mean, this this uh, you mentioned a very important point because... Um... The yield is baked in into the immutable code of hex, and of course there are a couple of um, protocols now that try to do similar things. This yield generating token, but back then I cannot think of anyone, any, any project or product that even tried to do that. Do you remember alternatives there are that are at least a little bit similar or were a little bit similar to hex? Um, just for I, I curiosity. Don't. Yeah, I, I don't. I know that um, as far as like yield goes, um, you know, Hex is really unique because you know it doesn't have admin keys, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I I know that they're even though I never got into it. I know Richard had talked a little bit about like the you know like the BlockFi and stuff like that, where I think but that's you can a loan out like company, right? Like uh, yeah, it's a, exactly. It's, it's, say. Yep. it's a it's a literally yeah, it's, yeah. it's literally a company like with with. Um, yep. With a registration and so on, but I, I was just wondering that um, if, if if hex or the hex launch was just ahead of time, you know, like back then there was nothing similar to it, especially if it just baked into the immutable code. Mm. So it was even more. I w I'm wonder. I, I'm wondering if if hex uh, launch now, for example, right? If if it would uh -huh. have like a like an easier start than back then. Would the, would the hate be less, you could say? Oh. Because now we are, oh. the co wider community is a little bit more familiar with yield generation on tokens and so on. So th this, th this, was, this was my curiosity, yeah. actually. But back then, there was yeah. no yield, actually, like in 17 right. and 18, 19. Well, and, uh, you know, Crypto Harpy, he did an interview with, uh, with Trayvon James. And, mm. you know, Trayvon was mentioning that with Richard, you know, he wasn't really getting hate. Uh, as a Bitcoin maximalist, because, you know, I was following him then too. Uh, e even though he was here and there, it was nothing compared to when he had actually decided, hey, I'm going to make my own crypto, my own smart contract hex. Because then, you know, yeah. the the Bitcoin maxis and stuff, um, as opposed to seeing someone like Richard, uh, you know, on their team, uh, you know, Richard, once again, he's, you know, he's a fan of like meritocracy, kind of, you know, choose the thing that's going to be better in the first place. So when he had kind of separated from, hey, Bitcoin actually sucks, you know, Ethereum, uh, you know, once again, these are things that we can build on top of. That's when he really got a lot of the hate. And, you know, when you ask the question, hey, is it kind of ahead of its time? I would say that it I would say that it is. But it also goes to show you um, just kind of how I don't know early the crypto space is. 
because mm -hmm. even though <clears throat> Bitcoin has been around for you know about 13 years, uh, Richard said this not only with the the name hex, but he had said like, hey, you know, your second most popular product at your you know at your bank is uh you know is a CD certificate of deposit. Once again, programmable yield. And so when he had said that, hey, no one else had thought of that but him. Um, yeah, I think he was an innovator in that in that regard. But once again, goes to show you how, you know, just how much different, say, crypto is from, say, like the traditional finance space that mm -hmm. they would totally equate, you know, programmable yield as something completely logical. Whereas when yeah. Richard had done it um, with, you know, Hex at the time, people, they, they, they had almost acted like they had never heard of the idea before. So it goes mm. to show you the lack of intelligence that the space has. Yeah. yeah, and maybe saltiness because you know they had the backs and that and that sort of yeah, coin, true. so they were biased and they wouldn't want to admit it. They wouldn't want to switch. Maybe. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You protect your back, like you. You're really ignorant if you're. You could. There's a. There's a quote that goes like, "You're really ignorant to facts or to to new stuff if your salary." depends uh, or your income depends on the on the opposite opinion right so if you hold a lot of like alternative bags of course you try to protect them um, which is bad for you right because you missed a lot of yep. there's a lot of opportunity costs associated to it so yeah. well uh, yeah and, yeah and, and i think you bring up like a just a, a good point that you mentioned where where yeah you know most people once again this isn't investing. This is speculating. Most people, they're just they're just throwing mud at the wall to see if it sticks, um, and, and they're just they're just totally you know gambling and you know degeneratively yeah. speculating on things. And uh, when you kind of just see you know when you when you separate the the wheat from the chaff type of deal, there really is only a handful of actual utilities that you know crypto has. Richard mentioned it's like you know, a, de a decentralized Excel spreadsheet. So with things like Hex, that's obviously great because it's, uh, once again, no admin keys, same thing with, say, Uniswap. Um, but then you look at the rest of crypto and, you know, crypto was designed to, you know, once again, uh, allow people to have sovereignty, be your own bank. And then it's just so interesting how you hear these people that are investing in these other cryptos that have admin keys that kind of have control and it's like it's completely the opposite narrative of of what they're saying they're in it for. So most people, like whether it's Doge or Shiba Inu, all this stuff during the hype cycles, most people kind of just get into something because they heard about it, not because hey, this actually makes sense. It's it's viable. It's mm -hmm. got a utility. So that's kind of interesting. yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of speculation to it. Uh, one one uh, example I have to think about it is. Um, when somebody uh, told a story that the neighbor got into Doge and uh, they just did it because they they heard about it from Elon Musk, but they actually had no idea what that is. You know, they have no clue what the fundamentals are. And as Richard mentioned, Dogecoin, uh, even the founders don't like Dogecoin. <laughs> and it was made up, it was invented as a joke, you know. To yeah. make fun of the cryptocurrency space, to make fun of Bitcoin a little bit. So yeah, it's ironic that actually Doge is doing quite quite well. Um, yeah. yeah. So this this the space is very very early, but I also have to say in general, speaking for the for your for the entire crypto ecosystem, because regardless of our like, um, you could say our differences to our cryptos. We all in all are still a, a very small sector compared to other traditional asset classes, um, but nevertheless, uh, the the whole uh, ecosystem is growing pretty fast. You know, especially if you compare uh, the, the the acceleration of ecosystem of funds getting into crypto space um, compared to 2017, where there was no no existing institutional uh, investors, for example, or or like broader ecosystem. Um, the space is growing pretty fast and also Hex and, and Pulse will benefit from that all in what all. What do you guys uh, think about the Bitcoin ETFs? Is it good for adoption or does it miss the point? I think it's very good, but maybe Bren, you can share your, your thoughts on that first of all. Well, you know, honestly, I uh, I honestly haven't really looked into all of it enough 
to to really answer that question, uh, whether whether I think it's positive or negative. I mean, I know the ETF is the exchange traded funds and and things like that. Um, I'm I'm not too sure to be honest. Uh, the thing that I will say is, uh, yeah. So once again, I can't really answer that question, but but you know, as far as what you guys mentioned before that, that hey, you know, this space is so early. Uh, 2017 was kind of like the first like major major time, I guess that that crypto kind of went like mainstream or viral. You know that a lot of people heard about it, but then once again, now you've got people that are you know from say like traditional finance, whether it's like equities and things like this, and they're realizing that hey, you know most of crypto is a joke, right? You know 99.9% of it, I would say. And a lot of it's just narratives and, and people, once again, like you say, they defend what they're holding. Um, but once yeah. again, there there is a few gems like like the the Amazon.com, the, the eBay, things like that after the, you know, the stock market crash of the 90s. And, uh, you know, I think Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, you know, those are things that actually have utility, that have merit. And so I think, like you mentioned, um, as this space kind of matures, because once again, it's a very immature space, you know, just look at the, the Bitcoin maximalist community and crowd. And it goes to show you that, okay, you know, those people, you know, good for them, right? They, mm. they did well with some of their gains and things like that. But once again, just because they were successful one time doesn't mean that they're right all of the times, you know, going yeah. forward in the future. Definitely, especially as the as the space is moving so fast. But in regards of the of the ETFs or Bitcoin ETFs, um, I think we also have to understand that there are two different aspects to it. Uh, first of all, for example, Hex is a typical grassroots approach. This is a very good for the for for like individuals for retail because it's their own custody uh, and uh, has no admin keys and so on. But ETFs are usually um, uh, interesting for institutional investors like hedge funds or, or family offices and they are usually or they are used to to exchange traded products right this et exchange traded so they prefer to go the old way that they are familiar with like buying on exchange and so on instead of just buying out of coinbase for example and do their own custody so it's a different sort of requirements that institutions have than retail like us right um, and nevertheless, I think uh, it's it's it, it helps the space because, again, uh, ETFs are very familiar for offices, and it's more likely that they would then purchase them to to put them into their their portfolio. And once yeah. they they get a first step into cryptocurrency through Bitcoin, and the reason why it is Bitcoin is because unlike for retail, again. For example, as Richard mentioned, liquidity is not important for retail because how much do you want to cash out? Like 50K in one uh, trade or even less probably. But even if you do 1 million in hex, that's that's fine. The slippage is 1%, 2%. But these institutions, they usually trade like seven, eight, nine figures big of tickets. And that's why uh, liquidity is very important to them. And that's why there's very little ETFs and uh, Bitcoin is the most successful one because there's a lot of liquidity. But I think it's a very good first step uh, for, for these big whales, you could say, into the crypto space. So I'm, I'm definitely pro. Okay, nice. Yeah, I think it's almost a natural step that would come because if you have an institutional investor or even family office, like you mentioned it, this cannot just be one guy uh, with a cell phone, you know, yeah. and his custody and then he does it all like they would have the need they would have to buy maybe even by regulations through a vehicle like an exchange traded fund. So absolutely. It would, because it, in the it, end, it it's also mountain. Not, like we, we, we deal with our own money, right? But for them, uh, it's third party money for them it's not their own money so there's a different yeah. set of regulations but for them. an individual like the idea of one individual person that takes action himself has custody about his keys his money mm -hmm. absolutely uh, he interacts with the protocols he mints yeah. his coins after he fulfills his delayed gratification that is good first Grassroots of all stuff. and also like healthy like taking responsibility yeah. and action mm. Um, Absolutely. So that's I another agree. beauty of the product hack. Exactly. Thing. Absolutely. I agree, yeah. Michel. Grassroots style, yeah. right? Like, yeah. <laughs> well, well, like, yeah. And, and even as far as crypto goes, you know, like you mentioned, hey, you know, be your own bank, not your keys, not your crypto. 
Um, I touched uh, on this a little bit last night with the, the video that I did, but you know, hey, when, when people are onboarding someone, whether it's into you know, Hacks or Pulse Chain or Pulse X or whatever, um, I think that security really is of utmost importance. You know, you mentioned, hey, um, the, the whole point of crypto is kind of being your own bank, things like this. So why would you hold your keys on, you know, why would you have your crypto on an exchange? Um, I think that that's one thing that that might get, I don't know, maybe uh, underlooked uh, often where, where mm -hmm. hey, you hear the 38% APY or the 40%, right? And all these different mm -hmm. gains. But once again, um, <laughs> so, so when we had the Uniswap airdrop uh, for once again, just using something that Richard had talked about and popularized, uh, you know, I was able to set up, you know, all my family members for the most part with, with some hex stakes and things like that. And, you know, I set them up with their own MetaMask wallets individually in just one copy. And I wrote on paper the seed phrase. And I said, hey, guys, and, you know, definitely don't ever, you know, lose this piece of paper. Don't ever uh, share it with anyone. Long story short, you know, three of the people, you know, you know, they they nearly lost the actual seed phrase. And luckily they didn't. But just the point is that, hey, you know, there's always yeah. a caveat to certain things. And I think yeah. it's just our responsibility that, hey, if we're going to be educating people, which a lot of us are, then, you know, at least take the time to tell them how to do security seriously. Because otherwise yeah. they will fall for, you know, one of those, uh, you know, people trying to, you know, um, socially engineer their seed phrase away from them. And then yeah. they like, they might have a bitter taste of crypto in their mouth because, you know, they got quote unquote scammed, even though, you know, it was their responsibility for their own crypto. So it's just important. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very I, important point. And which is, uh, which makes it even uh, more complicated is the fact that in Hex, once you stake, um, your, your stake is then tied to your seed phrase. So this makes it even more challenging because, you know, if you onboard a noob, it's already super complicated, right? Like you have to start with the basics of the blockchain. Then also it's not like just sign up in Coinbase and click a button, but you need then to install MetaMask. You need to sign up at Coinbase because you need to buy the E first of all, or the USDC. So it's a lot of hassle from the beginning anyway. But if you then add the security aspect to it, like, okay, now you have to buy a Trezor. It costs $100. Then you have to do this. Then uh, you have to add a passphrase in the end of the seed race. It's getting maybe a little bit too much, right? So this is a little bit challenging also for, for, for my own onboarding experience. Um, how far do you want to really go to not uh, to make sure you don't lose actually the noob, right? <laughs> um, but once it stakes, yeah. right, you can't just like, uh like upgrade the security three months later because once it's staked it's staked it's tied to the seed phrase so right. yeah, it's a little bit challenging yeah well you know that's a really good observation and and once again i mean hey just because bitcoin is 13 years old doesn't mean there's been 13 years of progress right i think mm. the space itself as a whole is really uh really like primal you know like to, once again for for hex to be the first crypto that was doing programmable yield out of all the other cryptocurrencies. And, you know, that launched in December 2nd, 2019, kind of goes to show you the, the space as a whole. So you're definitely right. And I said that point to say that, um, yeah, I mean, the, the more steps that there is uh, before you can actually get to the goal, then, then of course, yeah, people, they might, you know, uh, have a higher chance of, of quitting and things like that before they, you know, actually get to the goal. But the point is, is that goes to show you how early we are, because in the future, it probably will be, you know, uh, a one step, you know, you know, hey, download this app or buy the crypto here and it'll be a lot more streamlined. But the reason that there's so much more gains and you know, profit potential now is because those people did take those extra steps. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's only going to become uh, easier for people to you know, be onboarded from here in the future. So that's that's a good point that you bring up. There's definitely a whole bunch of steps. And the last yeah. thing I'll say to that point was that, yeah, I've I've had people that were interested about the gains and then I told them how to do it. And it was too many steps for their attention span to, uh, you know, to actually do. And uh, you mentioned it will be uh, more streamlined in the future um, with an app or something, but you would still need to uh, protect your seed phrase, right? Or, or yeah, is there a change sure. coming? 
Well, well, uh, for sure. I mean, I don't know, you know, kind of like you mentioned with, uh, with institutional stuff and, you know, it's kind of, mm. you know, changing some of the ideas where, where, yeah, you obviously want the possession, but like you mentioned with say institutions, um, th there might be some sort of like, you know, they, they, they might not want all that responsibility as far as that possession goes. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, there's always, you know, cause once again, I know people that <laughs> this is, this goes to show you like kind of how early we are you know, they're, they're on like the application called like Robin hood and they're like trading doge or whatever, you know, quote unquote cryptos. Mm -hmm. And they think that they're actually holding the crypto, but what they don't realize is that you can't actually withdraw on yep. things like Robin hood. And, and once again, like you mentioned too, uh, if someone has their crypto on an exchange, well, I had crypto on an exchange in 2017 cryptopia and that literally got mm -hmm. shut down randomly quote unquote Damn hack it. and oh New Zealand government investigating it, you know, that mm. was money never seen. So was a lot of ICOs. Right. So you're right. right there's right. there's a lot to to be wary for. Yeah, yeah. So kind of like people would or some people would demand this service where there's a custodian and they sign up with uh, know your customer and then they are happy that they can log in. They don't need seed phrase, which you know I think some people would want it and then one day we will have it because people want it the easy way. Um, so I, I also think this will happen, but at the same time, you know, that's not why crypto was invented, um, but you can't stop it. If people want it that way, it will happen. 100%. Yeah, it's, uh, the, the, I mean, it's super early for the entire crypto space, especially for hacks. Uh, still a lot of gatekeeping going yeah, on. Congrats I mean, if you took the effort. <laughs> 100%, absolutely. So we are super early. I'm super excited what will happen in the near future for not only for hacks, but also for Pulse Chain this year. Um, so we have a lot uh, a lot that we can uh, look Speaking forward to. Speaking of uh, near future, um, Las Vegas in March, that's already next month. Um, right. Valiant Brand, are you going? Yep, yep. Yeah, so I uh, I definitely committed to going. Uh, yeah, I know the 6th through the 9th is kind of the official days that uh, that they're having, you know, the conferences and things like that. So I'm looking forward to it. I went to the one last year, which was in June, and uh, mm. that was cool. But once again, since it was June and, you know, you're in Vegas, the damn desert, it was really, really hot. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it's cool that they're doing the the March time frame this year. And, uh, you know, the, the really mm. cool thing about this, you know, I see Max, uh, so shout out to Max Bonnet. Um, but he says, uh, uh, I guess he was kind of talking about the community. He said, uh, it's family. And yeah, this really is, you know, something that, that is powerful and, you know, kind of goes to show you, I mean, there's communities in anything else, right? Whether someone, you know, their sports team or their religion and things like this. But uh, I'm just really happy to uh, have found a whole bunch of like-minded people um, that also happen to be, you know, once again, critical thinkers. Like a lot of us, we had to ask ourselves and, and almost, almost as if we were insane, where it's like everyone was was crap talking hex in the very beginning. Like it was really hard to to kind of ignore and to kind of realize that those people were wrong. But the people that persisted through, the people that that had the information versus the speculation, uh, those people, mm -hmm. you know, held through and and kind of realized what they were holding. Um, so shout out to all those people. And once again, we really are super early. And uh, yeah, I'm just super happy for this opportunity for the community. I've uh, never been a part of something like this. And, you know, when you, when you meet the people in person, it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's a much yeah. better experience than you even have over the streams, right? In the streams, they're very organic as well. But yeah. same thing as if uh, in person, it almost feels like a long lost friend that you hadn't talked with for a couple of years. Yeah, I totally agree. Absolutely. We also could feel this, uh, this attitude, this positive mindset um, amongst of us uh, during the London event where uh, everybody, literally everybody was up for, for chill talk, uh, was very welcoming. Um, so it was, uh, it was a very positive atmosphere and there's more to come for sure. So we are looking forward. Uh, I hope uh, also uh, we will uh, meet in person, Bren, uh, rather sooner than later. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, what, which I look forward to for this year. And uh, maybe last question. 
Um, you mentioned Sunday 2 p.m. Pacific time uh, will be your spot mm -hmm. for streaming on your channel. Uh, what kind of things uh, do you want to do there? Like, what can we expect? Yeah. Um, so, so there really is kind of like no set agenda. Um, I pretty much am just speaking about kind of just some of the, the RH principles, right? The, the Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X. Uh, as far as diving into the weeds and the speculation, it almost feels like 2017 if I if I was to talk about the other cryptocurrencies on Pulse Chain, which is why I personally, uh, I don't, you know, I, I like to just stick with what's certain. Um, but anyways, yeah, as far as, as far as that question goes, I mean, the thing that I will say is even though there's so much going on in, uh, and nice to see you, Rick Schmitz. Um, but even though there's so much going on in crypto and things like that, um, not every single week when I'm doing the stream is there a whole bunch to talk about. And so, you know, the most recent stream that I had was like, mm -hmm. you know, 40 minutes, something like that. And, you know, some of them are kind of different time frames, but pretty much what I try and cover is just like, I don't know, any information, whether it was whether it was crypto or whether it was RH related crypto. Um, kind of just go over like some of the talking points and you know usually i just yeah. interact with the the community right as yeah. far as that, some of the really things cool, that are actually. upcoming I'm a big fan of that so even though there are no news right it's still positive to uh to to stream and sometimes the you could say the the nuggets you know the hidden gems evolve um during mm. the conversation during the the, mm. the uh, interaction with the community so i really appreciate also this kind of style you do uh, brand sometimes interacting just with the with the chat or um yeah, yeah giving giving providing yeah. us your thoughts so yeah thanks for that what, yeah you know very last point that you kind of mentioned that i i think it's important because funding jim had mentioned this a long time ago too but <laughs> when when <sighs> When, when the market itself is just kind of like chopping sideways or going down in sideways, um, it's not super fun to constantly just be talking about, you know, crypto yeah. or, or just one sole thing. And so I just wanted to say shout out to uh, all the hexagons. I mean, I know uh, there's, a, there's a handful of different ones, but one of them was like hex foodies, you know, so they're, mm -hmm. they're hexagons, but they're, they're talking about like sustainability and some of these mm -hmm. other things cool. that, that, uh, you know, once again, they're not crypto as a specific, but they're things as a whole that I think kind of tie in with crypto. And so anyways, once again, sometimes there's, there's more information in news. Sometimes there's less information in news and, uh, it kind of just varies from week to week. And, you know, sometimes as well, I have, uh, you know, people on my stream. Uh, that we kind of just conversate with just like this versus a, a monologue the whole time. And and I really like right. those as well, like you mentioned with, with Naga or Crypto7. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we're looking forward to to your streams and also hopefully, as as mentioned before, to meet in person. I, f I am yeah, pretty sure uh, it will happen rather sooner than later. So yeah, uh, one more time. Uh, thank you very much, Bran, for, for showing up today, for supporting us. And it was uh, really nice to talk to you live um, about like, yeah, about Hex life, about Pulse, everything. So thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Bran. What is awesome. Hey, thank you guys too. You guys are really doing a great job. Um, keep up the consistent work. I, I love that you guys have a schedule and then yeah, you know, those numbers, they will, uh, they will accumulate and they will add up. So you guys are doing everything as far as the recipe for success goes and you know, what a hell of a journey this is. So shout out to you guys for, for doing that as well. You know, providing value, interviewing people. Uh, Cause once again, I think sometimes a lot of these things might go like, uh, overlooked, but you know, the, the conversations, as you mentioned that we have, I think they are very important. And as you mm -hmm. mentioned, people can gain uh you know golden tidbits out of it so thanks again yeah. for what you guys do too awesome thank, thank you, you very man. much for the feedback man talk to you soon okay bye 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 Ciao. great guys this was the one and only legendary Belliot brand we don't have to introduce don't have to tell much about him um misha would you give us uh, some short uh, a short summary of what has been discussed during the stream with Bran? Of course, Meister. This was Hex Grassroots number 16 with legendary Belliot Bran, 25-year-old Hexican out of Seattle, Washington. He's already retired with Hex. You will have a chance to meet him next month earlier in Las Vegas or on his live stream on his main channel. 
on Sunday, 2 p.m. Northern Pacific time. Brilliant Brand himself, he got into crypto. Well, before he went into crypto, he was into precious metals, actually. And, you know, Bitcoin was labeled as the digital gold. So that's how he got into crypto. And then one day on Reddit, in one of his subreddits, they talked about Richard in a very negative way. Richard the Hart, the, the spammer. Richard Hart, the scammer. So he said, okay, I'm going to look him up. He went to his YouTube and he says of himself that uh, he, Balliard Brand, has a very good BS meter. And when he watched Richard Hart and how awesome he is and how much education and self-help videos and books he gives out for free, um, he said, okay, uh, my IQ EQ is telling me this is a solid dude. And he kept watching in fr throughout the beer market, 18 and 19. Richard Hart kept educating. So he loved it. And then when Hex uh, launched, he went in and the rest is history. He is saying Hex is still pre-viral. And when Pulse coming out, it will uh, get Hex even more exposure. So we will have a lot to come. And um, if you made the effort to get a wallet and you're taking care of security, then just congratulations. Thank you very much, Misha, for the summary. Guys, this was Hex Grassroots number 16. Please give us a like, please subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode in seven days, the 8th of February at 7 p.m. CET Berlin time with another Hex Grassroots as a special guest. See ya. Bye. Goodbye.